This week, a whole shit ton of news happened. And then we delayed for three more days for a more shit ton of news. But we're only going to discuss PlayStation. We'll save the other stuff for another time. But PlayStation is the big topic of this week. Right, Matt? You are correct. Speaking of which, <clears throat> this is the Gamers 2 podcast for June 15th. 15th, technically. Technically. Your weekly roundup of news and commentary related to the video games industry and anything else that might pique our interest. This is Matt, by the way. That is Matt. This is Nate. There you go. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the experience. The Gamers 2 experience. The PlayStation experience. Yeah. We can call it that. That doesn't exist anymore. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I'm pretty sure they probably still have copyright and trademark on it, but, you know, in case they don't. So, uh, yeah, Matt. Yeah. New releases? I don't know. Should we just just, go right into it? Let's just go new releases, and then we'll get to where we need to get to. New releases. As of Friday, the 12th. So if you want to play some games, go ahead. You know, they're going to be watching a lot of coverage coming up these next two weeks. But if you want to play something in the meantime, you can play Desk of Ashes on the PC. Destiny Season 2. You're going to hear more about that in a minute. Elder Scrolls Online. Greymore came to consoles. It was already out on, on uh, PC. Project Warlock comes out for the PlayStation Switch and Xbox. Astronaut comes out on PC. Are they ostriches? No. You remember those? I think they're referencing like that toy that... Is so they're like the otters and other like weird. They might have been in like E4. I know that's really specific for you and I to know, but they were a weird, I think, like kids show that made a game. Oh, okay. If that narrows it back down, uh, Samurai Showdown comes to PC and Warborn for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, Samurai Showdown that's the one that's free on Epic Store. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. And I have claimed it. I, I claimed it today, and that's the only reason why I know that. Yeah, I claim everything that goes free if I can, if I remember. Free dollars, the best deal. The best deal. Well, nothing's ever free. <laughs> I contend that this is. Epic has other ideas about that concept. Yeah, because they sell my data to... <laughs> blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's just knock the small potatoes out of the way before we get to the big potatoes. News story point five. It's like number one technically, but you know, we'll work it out. Destiny news, Matt. Did you trim or do anything to any of my writing? Uh, I did add a point into the Destiny news. Okay. Uh, it's the very first one. Okay. Um, and that's really it. I added a game into the something we'll talk about later in the next episode, we'll say. Yeah, it, it, is, um, it will be the next episode. And that's it, really. Okay. That's scary. For anybody else that's listening, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. But number one, Destiny News, like I said, Destiny 2 on PS5 and Series X will support 4K 60 frames. Owners of Destiny 2 on PS4 and Xbox One will get free upgrades to the next-gen version, but it only applies if you stay inside the same console ecosystem. Lame, because you have Play Anywhere on your Destiny account. Yeah, kind of weird. I thought that was a strange choice based on that. Yeah, it uh, be- because it's Play Anywhere, and you can play the same character on anything, Mm-hmm. It's weird that they won't let you do the upgrade either. Yeah. I think it's the the thing that was interesting about that particular point was that so on the Xbox side of it, they're using Xbox smart delivery. Right, yep. But they're still doing it on the PS5 side of it, but we know nothing of smart deli- of, of a of smart a, delivery for air quotes smart delivery on that side, yeah. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. My guess is that it would just be a download type thing or you put in your like a redemption, your old disc or yeah, some type or they actually just do have smart delivery and we move on. Yeah, but it'll that's a more details to be found out later in the next coming months as we only have X amount of PlayStation news now. Yeah, which will 
Touch which on. we'll be getting to. <laughs> I'm going to keep going to that. We'll be getting to that. Uh, let's see here. Well, we might as well just switch back and forth. Um, yeah, we'll just, a... we'll just alternate. I mean, the bullets for this are whatever, but when, especially when we hit PlayStation, we might as well just alternate bullets. Yeah. Uh, there's a new <laughs> season out now for Destiny 2 called The Season of Arrivals. I know nothing about this. No, neither do I. But hey, it's out. It's a new season. Your normal apparently Destiny season nonsense. Apparently, it's stuff that they've been building to since Destiny started. But I could never tell you from the beginning what the story of Destiny was. So... Just wanted to put it out there if in case anybody was interested. I saw something about, and I think it was related to this. They're doing some sort of uh, gun rotation as far as like year one, year two weapons go, where they're going to be cycling them in and out. Makes sense to make things more manageable for them because you can't just keep expanding Mm -hmm. and not keep yourself railed in at the same time yeah uh let's see there's gonna be a fall expansion this year called the beyond light which did did, they didn't say anything about about it right they They might have said more but i literally grabbed the headlines because i don't understand destiny same (laughs) anymore i did look it seemed like every news story I read about it was just like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's expansions. Right. Like, hey, there's more coming. And what all, what all of this spoke to me saying was, was I have the boost on on these mics, and I don't know if that's going to ruin anything. No. Seems fine. The Phantom? Because the Phantom's on. Yeah, it shouldn't, shouldn't cause a problem. Which one's the Phantom button? Should be the smaller one. <clears throat> okay. Just for funsies. Yeah. If anything changes, don't worry about it. Uh, the the th- the message I was getting through reading all this news and everything is there's no Destiny 3. Yeah. That's this what I is, took away too. This was going to... If there was a Destiny 3, this is what it was. I like literally... When I was looking at the doc, I pulled it up and I was like skimming through the Destiny news and I got to the, like, the last part we're going to get to in a second here and it starts listing years. I'm like, okay, so no Destiny 3. Yeah. Which goes back to when they launched Destiny, they said it was a 10-year project. Mm -hmm. And then Destiny 2 came out. So it's like, I don't know if they were were expecting three years with roughly, or three games with roughly three years worth of life each Mm -hmm. into that. Or if they had meant like Destiny itself will last 10 years and then Activision's like, well, drop a two. But yeah, it, you know, we'll see. I mean, it's plenty pretty and it runs really well, so... And there are two more expansions on their way. One is coming next year called Destiny the Witch Queen in 2021. Which apparently is the Queen of the Taken King. Okay. Okay. Uh, Yep. (laughs) And then Lightfall in 2022. Yeah. Destiny 2 Lightfall. Don't know what that means. Light fall okay i guess we could infer more light things falling and light (laughs) if there's a screech i'm sorry there wasn't good news Mm -hmm. Uh, the light fall one um i didn't we already lose our light once yeah in the beginning of two okay and one and a lot of other times now we go to the dark quite a bit it a lot of it, it it goes to like where almost we shouldn't be speaking to it because we aren't Destiny players anymore. And even D1, we fell off before the end. Destiny had a lot of potential that it never quite delivered Like on. during the Taken King, is I think is where I stopped and I came back at like the end of it for the raid. But then I didn't play the final one where everything got better. Mm-hmm. Hammer? No. Uh, Something with a Titan showed up, and it was a big hammer thing, I think. Oh, uh, is that the Saint-14 thing? Or maybe. No, there, was, there was the Ooh. Iron... Something with Iron. Uh, I mean, Iron Banner was a thing, but it was that was an event. No, there was like a, an expansion that was... Or a season or something. That oh, was the all Foundry like, thing, maybe? Yeah, it was something. like... Yeah, but I don't Fountain think that was of the... Iron... Or... All right, so this is how much we know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came back at the beginning of... This is well documented on this part of the podcast, but I came back in Destiny 2, 
played the entire thing and was like, cool, I'm enjoying this. Played the first DLC, went, nah, I'm done. Because the first DLC did nothing for me. It actually like burned me as far as I was concerned. And then I was just like, all right, I'm done. I still have no idea what's going on. These are all the same enemies I fought and blah, 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 blah. But there's still, I I would love to see their numbers. I have to assume there's probably a million concurrent or like a million daily users across all their Destiny systems still playing. There would have to be. I mean, I knew, I do know a few people who are still like dedicated Destiny players. And yeah. they play pretty regularly, it's, and especially when content comes out. And then they are always like playing maybe once a week. I have, I have a group I see hop in on, on Steam every now and then that when new content drops, they're there for a few weeks and stuff. So mm-hmm. people still go back to it and everything, but it's just like, and their shooting is so good. Like everything it still is. feels so good. But every time I, so I tried to play on Stadia. Let's, let's bring this up to the mix. Oh boy. <laughs> part of my weekend or part of my week last week after this news dropped as I was, and I was listening to other people talk about it. I listened to a uh, Paris from, uh, gamer tag radio he was on do soup and they were discussing destiny news and he is a destiny fan and he's talking about it and he's like yeah you know all this cool stuff and blah blah, blah and, and the shootings really feel good and then i was watching uh, a platypus on twitch that's the username a platypus not i wasn't watching a platypus do it but uh, i was watching him play destiny on twitch and I was like, oh man, I, I, the itch was starting to come a little bit. I was like, that shooter is always, it was always a good fun PVE shooter. And I was like, all right, well, I have a, I know my account is eligible for a trial of, of Stadia Pro. Stadia Pro. I, 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 why am I, why am I promising that correctly? Oh my God, you yeah. peasant. Oh. <laughs> Stadia Pro. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. I wanted to try it anyway. So let's try it with Destiny and see what happens. Chrome, Stadia, blah, blah, blah redeem destiny and it was just as simple as redeem hit play and it started Mm -hmm. going and i was playing pc right on pc okay so i hit play and i was going and then the lag and i was like nope can't do it immediately can't do it it wasn't it wasn't egregious where i was like hitting it and then i could count but it was a hundred percent noticeable where i was like i can't get into a firefight like this because i will die immediately Mm mm-hmm but it was interesting. I played it for maybe 10 minutes, and I was just like, I can't. This, I can't do it. Yeah, I, my thing with Destiny was I always wanted it to be more like an MMO. Like, I always wanted there to be more content, more like... It's always like they... It always seems like they're teetering that line. Mm-hmm. Where they're like, we want to be the, your looter, shooter, gun MMO. And I'm sitting there like, and, just do it. Yeah, just just... Just give in. <laughs> and then every time they're like, well, but we're not that. And you're just like, but you are that. And they're like, yeah, we are that. And you're, you're like, yeah, exactly. And they're like, but no. And we're like, ah. <laughs> it's that meme where the, the SpongeBob meme, where it'd be like, you know, the back and forth. Oh, the, yeah, it's um, Patrick it's, and oh, what is his name? Manta Ray? I think it or Manta might be his the enemy's name. And he's yeah, they're trying to teach in the episode they're trying to teach him to be nice. So he's trying to return Patrick his wallet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Patrick's just like, That's not my wallet. And he's like, That's your name. Yep. <laughs> so there and that's your ID? Yep. So therefore this must be your wallet. Yeah, I agree. So take your wallet. It's not mine. And it's like <laughs> <laughs> It's basically that. Uh but it is a it is well, I scroll through my twelve pages of document. Hold on, it is a um, an interesting. I don't know, not narrative, uh, and just an interesting. I wish an interesting ecosystem to be outside looking in, where I feel like if I never left, mm-hmm. I would probably be like, "This all makes sense to me." Yeah, but looking in, I just go, I don't understand what to do. And then even when I was watching people play and listening to people talk about it, and then they go to the the planet map, I'm like, there's 17 planets. I have absolutely no idea what I'm even clicking on. It became Division 2 very fast, where I was like, I'm here. There's a lot of stuff to kill. But what do I kill? I wish I could recapture that moment, like that first time that we played and like, you know... In you... Alpha or... Not Alpha, but like... Probably when the game came out, because that intro is so good. 
the very first intro when you you like res up and you got to go through you see like all the cars and you got to go through the yeah when you still had dinklebot yeah you got to go through that tunnel system and everything and then like destiny one just that feeling when you're playing through the first time and we were all playing through it together like i wish it was just always like that even even that even our post that time when we were just grinding out strikes at night we're like all right hey yeah so who's not whatever light level all right cool you guys want to just do strikes and we would just fly through because we were all different classes and we would just get through what 20 strikes a night probably Mm mm-hmm because we would just sit in the playlist. There were three of us, and we would just keep going. You, me, and Dewey, you, me, and Tyler, whatever, and just go. And it was just casual because it was just so much. It was fun, and we could, we were good enough to not have to like worry about anything else. I was like, all right, cool, yeah, fun time. It's like what I want. I've always wanted that, like the the strike feeling again in like a borderlands type thing or something mm-hmm. where i've said like borderlands with a diablo variant would be awesome but we're you know never gonna get that i assume maybe someday we'll be optimistic yeah sure let's go with that matt <laughs> that's what this podcast is known for <laughs> sheer optimism <laughs> not realism or pessimism at all well speaking of <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the future shall we move on to the next massive topic that we have i suppose kfc has a gaming console <laughs> i loved everything about that tweet by the way it, it, like, it's basically it's just an air fryer yeah it opens up it's a 4k uh, air fryer uh if you haven't seen first off G- kfc has the regular twitter account but kfc also has a kfc gaming twitter account and they on KFC Gaming announced their new console that does 4K 60 frames and has a <laughs> fry basket in it. <laughs> so it keeps your chicken warm. The tweet and the video was great. Yep, absolutely great. Uh the only thing did we just need, you know, a sequel to uh Oh, uh fucking, Colonel Sanders. Yep, Colonel Sanders finger, finger looking finger, good dating simulator. Yep. Getting a, you got to get a sequel for it. And then the responses um, in that tweet are also fantastic. Xbox got in on the action. And the KFC account was responding to people. And, like, it was just... Whoever runs that account. Yeah. It's, they, just, it's like the same people that run the mm-hmm. Wendy's one when they start roasting other random companies. Or, like, people send pictures of, like, oh, what do you think about my McDonald's? Or, like, oh, man, I wish you had real food. Or, you know. Yeah. It's probably the same marketing company. It probably is that just hires all the same, like, prob- my guess is, like, uh, mid-20s people that live in these ecosystems and are like, I know what I can get away with and still be professional and beloved by people. It's probably, like, writers who don't, who haven't really, like, had success yet. Right. You know, who can't, like, you know, necessarily get a job in like a TV show or a late night show or something because yeah, like yeah. they have no credentials yet. They're, they're like, I'll fill in writing for Wendy's Twitter <laughs> while I'm, you know, applying to all these late night shows as a writer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's at least what it is in my head. Canon. That's what it is in my head. Canon. I, I like that idea. It's like if before Conan was a writer and then his own show, he was mm-hmm. just writing Wendy's roast tweets. Yeah. And it was a great time. <laughs> But the actual big news of the week, PlayStation 5, the event has happened. We finally got to see the console. We did. We did get to see the console. It is a large console. It's thick boy. It is not the uh, trash can that the Series X is. Not the, you know, the tall cube. Mm-hmm. I mean, the trash can we all know is the Mac yeah. from a couple the, years ago, but the toaster does it have a nickname? Does it have like a the, the, the Xbox? Xbox? No, not really. I mean, people have said like the uh, mini fridge, mini fridge. Yeah, I guess because mini fridge router <laughs> and the toaster would be the switch dock. Yep. Uh, oh yeah, the toaster. But uh, yeah, it's theirs is a rectangular prism, but this one is technically a rectangular prism. But <laughs> ignore, ignore, <laughs> ignore math. Uh, 
is actually, I think, taller than like when it, when everything is stood up on its side, it is taller than every other yeah console that has come sent or has come out, and you don't see that until everybody puts everything side by side. You mm-hmm. just see it and you're like, oh, okay, that mm-hmm. makes sense. And it's like, I think it's thicker too if you get the disc version. Yeah, the the. All right, let's just that's we're, let's. We're, we're giving a little much. spoilers here. Let's run through some details. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. At PS5's launch, uh, they will offer two options, which we alluded to. <laughs> There'll be the PlayStation 5 console with an Ultra HD or 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive, like a traditional console. And then they're also doing a PS5 digital edition that nixes the disc drive. Makes the profile a little bit slimmer. A little bit. Not um, too much, but it, it obviously losing a disk drive does make it slimmer. Yes. Uh, I was personally slapped in the face with that one. I don't know why I did not think that was going to happen. I didn't think it would happen at launch. Yeah. I didn't think they'd be launching with two of them. I figured it would be like every other one where it's a X amount of years into the cycle, there's the digital version. Even if it was next year or two years and they're like, all right, we need to revive sales because we're not going to come out with a slim version yet. Mm -hmm. There's the digital version. But no, we're going to launch with two versions. Yep. And I think I, when I was watching it, I did the, oh, oh. Yeah, because when you watch the trailer, or I guess you watch the reveal trailer that's only like three minutes long, they show you the whole thing and then they start cutting again into uh, like close-ups of the design and stuff. And you're like, oh, all right, they're just showing that again. And then they zoom out, and they're like, digital version. And I was like, huh? oh, <laughs> I, I didn't see that coming. Oh, our, I'm in. Oh, no. <laughs> it went from like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, to that's really interesting. Yeah. Because this goes to the price point conversation. If Which that is just the preface. We did not get a price point. Yeah, we have no prices. We also have, other than like the hardware details from uh, things previous, we don't have true spec breakdowns of the difference between the two consoles other than one doesn't have a disk drive. No storage numbers, no port descriptions of what is pluggable where type of thing, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's, that is missing from our our conversation. I think in the tech thing, didn't they say that they didn't obviously mention a digital version, but they kept referring that the SSD would be like something weird, like 825 gigs. Yeah, they had a weird 800 something number in there, which we were like, that's strange. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't, is that the same SSD in both? Yeah, we, this is the, this is the conversation that we were having here is whether, how different the two versions are going to be and what does that mean for the price point what's the difference between the price point is there even going to be a difference in the price point like right it's uh i think matt and i are both looking at the physical version for the idea of the 4k ultra blu-ray player but if the the idea the default idea that anybody would jump to physical is going to cost 499 and digital would cost 399 and the only difference would be the addition of the drive would be everybody's base guess. Yeah. You think a little bit more on it and it could be that at 499 you get the physical one and at 399 you have the digital one but with more storage space because of it only being digital. Then Which- your scales start tipping to do I n- not care about the disk drive? Yeah, and the price shifting too, because even if it's like, if it's not a hundred dollars, if it's fifty fifty dollars, it's like ah, uh, like it's, I if if it is more convoluted and not just a cut and dry, we lopped off the disc drive. It's going to be a difficult decision. Yeah, it, the yeah, it, basically the more convoluted the differences <laughs> get, the harder it will be for us to choose. Yeah. Which makes sense, I guess. And especially when it things. comes to price point, because if those aren't the two price points, if that if that digital one is three ninety nine, they're gonna sell tons. Yeah, for because sure. Because nobody will. That'll be the beginning of just killing the physical industry. 
because your majority of players will go, it's the same thing, but cheaper. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to do that. And then the you other... have the, you know, 40% that are physical collectors that are like, all right, I'll, I'll start with this, but they're going to start weeding them out quick. Yeah. The, what also me that caught me off guard with the, the dual console announcement was all those stories going back about how Sony was going to limit production the first year, couple months or whatever. Like it doesn't, those two ideas don't necessarily jive with each other. We're going to drop two consoles. We limited production and you're like, (laughs) wait, 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 wait. So do you have half as many than what you thought was less? I'm so confused. (laughs) This isn't a math podcast. Thank God. (laughs) Except for when I mentioned rectangular prisms incorrectly. (laughs) Uh, The other... No, did I have something else? Hold on. I might not have. I'm going to think about it for two more seconds. Nope. Okay. Uh, I'll take care of the next three. Don't ever, in, in this writing, as you can tell, don't worry about reading the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just get to the point. Because I didn't write this. <laughs> I made sure to grab recaps and go, all right, we need to mention this, 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 this. As you can tell. The on the fly editing. On the fly editing. <laughs> what I do the entire podcast. The uh conference? I don't even know. The event started with showing when we got to the game side, showed that GTA five, yeah, not six, five started the entire thing, revealing that it will be an expanded and enhanced edition. Due to hit in PlayStation 5 in 2021. So not even at launch. But in our launch window, probably. Somebody mm-hmm. probably said in our launch window, which usually extends for like six months for some reason. Because they never understand that. Different, you've, heard, you've heard us talk about the launch window problem before. <laughs> I don't need to continue it. But I was like, oh, Rockstar. And then I heard GTA 5 and I just went, no, shit. <laughs> I don't think either of us were under any sort of illusions delusions whatever you want to say of gta 6 coming anytime soon but i don't know where this whole like thing came from where everyone's expecting gta 6 to come out anytime in the next here's my years. thing if you heard me drinking i'm sorry here's my thing i wasn't expecting gta 6 no which but what i would have loved to have seen was them go GTA 5 is, is also on PS5. Cool. That's mm-hmm. all fine. Because obviously, why wouldn't it be? You're going to make a shit ton of money. But here's Story DLC. Here's San Andreas Remastered. Like, punch them with something in the teeth that isn't just GTA 5 is on PS5. I was talking to a coworker about this, and it was the our consensus was that cool, whatever, kind of sucks that, you know, it's nothing special, but I, I could have really have gone for a Vice City remaster. Yeah, like hit him, hit him with, hey, this is on there, and also we're bringing this. Yeah. To hold you over for GTA 6, because we're not, we're not there yet. Then the other thing would have been like, what if you dropped Red Dead instead? Or like did both. Yeah. Where you're like, Red Dead's also playable on these new things. So you, you split the trailer cut half and half, it's GTA and then also Red Dead. Like, mm-hmm. Okay. I feel like Red Dead Online is going to be abandoned. At some, yeah, I feel like soon. online is, but I don't even mean for the online thing. Just say that you're going to, you would make it playable on the PS5 mm-hmm. or Xbox Series X and take advantage of the. It would have been power. nice to get a uh, Red Dead DLC, uh, Undead Nightmare, you know? Like yeah. the Undead, whatever. Uh, was that what it was called? Undead, Undead Nightmare Night- was the first, yeah. Something like that. So the timing would have worked roughly like if they would have released it on PS4 first and then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. More GTA 5 online. Yeah. It can't, was, it, can't fucking escape that shit. It was a good, it was, it was a overall disappointing announcement, but it was a good start to the event. Yeah. I, and definitely something that they should have put first just to get it out of the way. Yeah. Because like if you would have you left that. You can't close with that. No. You could you could have it as a weird insert in the middle of things, but it's a good just hey this is happening let's move on yeah. But then we move to uh, the next 
what are next the first new game of the the conference event i don't know screw a conference i'm so used conference. to this being it's june i'm used to having conferences happening of the new conference we have marvel's spider-man miles morales the next chapter in the acclaimed partnership between the legendary studio and marvel games is out for ps5 this holiday matt i know people are hyped on this i'm pumped i'm pumped i don't give a fuck because i'm not a (laughs) spider-man fan i started playing the first spider-man game made it like five minutes and was like okay it's Spider-Man. Cool. And left. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I really enjoyed that Spider-Man game. Spider-Man's like... And I'm pumped for more of it. I don't know, especially after just... Especially after Spider-Verse and everything. Like, It's just... The train's going. I get it. I get it. It's not my thing. That's fine. It's that game... You know how we always have this conversation where it's like, oh, I played this game and like... You know, I played it for X amount of time. I'm like, yeah, I get it, but I'm not going to finish playing it. That's like... Yeah. Yeah, we'll get there. Speaking of Star Wars Squadrons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Insomniac also revealed Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, a galaxy-hopping new PS5 adventure in the fan-favorite Insomniac series. So a new Ratchet and Clank, not a remake, anything. We have a new one. Yeah, from Insomniac. Yeah, from Insomniac after their remaster four years ago might be four years ago for the original or for the remaster of ratchet and clank that then also had a movie Mm -hmm. but it was received really well so we got a new one i was uh fairly surprised by it um but it looked at i was like oh man this actually looks good i might look at possibly playing this because like I, i don't know the mechanics seemed really interesting um, for like a what whatever you what would you call it a game platformer platformer action game action RPG or action ad- action adventure I don't action know action adventure yeah um let's say RPG I mean kind of there yeah. are elements of it but looks really good there's no first off there's also no such thing as genres anymore in, in video games the only thing that is like defining is FPS in third person that's about it yeah you have like your games that are trying to be a retro genre and then you yeah. have like a modern game. <laughs> The only genres now are how you literally look in the game. Do you use VR? Do you is it isometric 2D? Is it 3D? Those are the kind of, saying like platformers, like there's platforming elements and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I was A- action RPG. Every game you've ever played. You're <laughs> welcome. I was pleasantly surprised by that one as far as like it looking attractive to me. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It it definitely was it looked like more Ratchet and Clank, which isn't bad. That's a good thing. And it looked pretty, and the the remaster looked really pretty too. Mm-hmm. And I was I played some of the remaster, and I just it never like sank its teeth into me. Uh, but this one was the same thing. I was like, I'm I'm intrigued. I'd probably sit down with it for a bit, but we'll also see when that comes out. What's around that? Yeah, I mean, realistically, what's probably going to happen is. I'll see more on it and I'll be like, Oh yeah, it looks cool. And then something else will come out and I'll get stuck in that. Or I'll like watch someone play a couple minutes of it. And here's what will happen to me. I will be playing something. I'll go, Oh yeah, that came out and I'll see Ray streaming it. I'll watch Ray play the entire thing and I'll go, and I'm good. (laughs) And I'll miss out on the opportunity for myself. Uh, And then before we reach into indies and third party games, our friends over at Gorilla gave us a look at Horizon Forbidden West for PlayStation 5, the Horizon Zero Dawn sequel. What do we think before I even continue on anymore? What do we think on the title? Horizon Forbidden West. Um so the title is what is I, I'm kind of alluding to my feelings on the trailer here, but Oh wow, uh, who'd have thought? <laughs> the 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 title is kind of what gives me a, like a lot of, I don't want to say hope, but it's making me interested, more interested in the game than the trailer actually did because the story elements from the first game, uh, the reason her, the, the guy that raised, um, Aloy, uh, what the fuck was his name? Well, I mean, raised is <clears throat> a real loose definition of, yeah, the dude who spoke to her throughout the entire thing. The, I don't know if there's really raising happening. Well, you know, the the beginning of the game, like when the dude who's like 
her father figure. I, kind of. He's the one that's in her ear the entire time. Nope. Not the black guy. Oh. Different the, person? Yep. I, would, I only it, remember the three women. Like the... There's the three women. There's the guy, the outcast. The exile dude. Oh, okay. I want to say his name was like Rust or something, but it was like... It was another play on... Okay. He, like, his whole story, and that was kind of, like, one of those subplot lines where, like, she was always trying to figure out more about him. Oh, in the very beginning when you're the kid. Yes. Okay. Yeah, now I remember. I, com- I, I haven't played the game in so long. I yeah. Actually, like, I forgot that they did the, the kid thing. Yep. The time, like, you played the tutorial, basically, as a yeah. kid. Um, One of the sub, like, plot lines was that, like, she was always trying to find out more information on him and why he was, like, in exile and all this and that. And he, that's right, because that's before she goes back to the bill. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. He left the their sacred ground or whatever. Right. To go to the Forbidden West for some reason. Right. So I'm interested in that whole aspect of it. Um, this is why you're here. <laughs> because the games you do play, you remember. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> the, yeah, fair, fair enough. The rest of the trailer was like bizarre to me because it was... It it just didn't have the it's, same feel as the as the game first game did. The trailer doesn't, but it's it's I just think, an think, announcement. Trailer, yeah, I think so. going back to what we said downstairs, it is it a trailer or is it almost a teaser? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's it, like a it's a confirmation teaser of this exists. We're making it here. It is here's some pretty screenscapes and an idea of what the enemy is you're going to be facing, but we're not going to show or tell you anything or really give you tractors that drive by your house when you're recording a podcast. (laughs) Oh, I'm actually not wrong. It was a tractor. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) The, the tone is almost, even though that has dark elements, it's brighter and like she's like, oh yeah, the Forbidden West. I'm on this solo journey, and I'm the only one that can save everybody. But at the same time, you're like, the Golden Great Bridge looks beautiful in this apocalyptic world. Yeah, it was like bright, tropical, like which there's I, there's nothing wrong with any of that. It's just like when and it does show a good contrast of that versus when you do see the bad areas that are overrun with that red plant. Mm-hmm. That's how you just thing. call it corruption. Yeah, in the, in the first game. When they're overrun with that stuff, and you're like, okay, those are two clearly like separate area. You know, you have you cleanse this. This is what it could return to, type mm-hmm. things and stuff like that. But it's it was definitely an interesting, an interesting look. I want to see more of it before it comes out. That is one that it, your one trailer has not done enough for me. I need to see another one. Yeah, and that's a whole other thing. Like when it comes out, um, because they showed us essentially an announcement teaser. Uh, with nothing else. So, like, is this going to be a launch window? Like, yeah, barely launch window. Is it going to be a launch game? Is it going to be, like, next E3 we'll get an announcement? That, that one, oh, man. I would love to see that be a launch title. That should, like, that along with Spider-Man would be, and, and the one I'm about to talk about would be a, a big old swing. Yeah, that like, would be like... Go. That would be a huge swing, and if, like, for example, if Xbox didn't answer with something along the lines of, like, Halo Infinite. Yeah. It'd be, and something else. Yeah, it'd be a clear, a clear... Uh, Out of the gate, it would be... Battle win for her. Probably, yeah. <laughs> for the PS5. Uh, I could easily also see them holding this a year. Yeah. That was... Doing it fall, you know, that being Sony's fall game next year. Mm-hmm. While they launch with these other things in the meantime, because you'll uh, have Call of Duty and all the other. Was things Horizon this year. a spring game? Was that a February? It was a February game. Yeah, which is possible, but I think yeah. that's also still kind of a weird thing to do if you're not just if you're going to be ready in February, but you're not going to be ready in November or whatever mm-hmm. that would mean. Which is it, it's definitely possible, but I just I don't think yet we have any idea what they would have ready for next fall where this could slot perfectly into that spot. Yeah, at the, still... at the moment, because just we don't have enough, we don't have enough info. Even with all this list of games that I have here, we don't have enough. For sure. But then, Polyphony or Polyphony? Polyphony, I think. Polyphony sounds good. Digital dropped by to unveil Gran Turismo 7. 
as the real driving simulator <laughs> prepares for a new generation of hardware. Thoughts on the Gran Turismo show up? Uh, it looked dope. Uh, I'm excited that we have a numbered Gran Turismo game. Yeah, I'm pumped that we have a, a exactly a numbered Gran Turismo game, a a game that is going to get bought by you and I. Mm-hmm. We are going to race on it, and they showed us gameplay. They did. I, that looked beautiful, like genuine, actual l- gameplay. Yeah, decently length for the size, of, like for the conference. Yeah, I mean the the entire trailer, the announcement, the gameplay, or the announcement, the menu moving, and then the gameplay is. Three and a half minutes, mm-hmm. I think. And the gameplay is done exactly like Matt and I driving by going way too fast into a corner, breaking really hard, cutting some people off, watching other people try to pit each other. It's a whole thing. And they got a good assortment of cars in that race they, that you see, too. Like, yeah, and it was just a Mazda race. Not, well, that no, was... It was it was the Mazda like Club Championship or something. Yeah, was the name which the was race. the confusing part because it was the Mazda it was Club be Championship. And then there was like, I saw there was the... Mazda Vision concept car that was the actual yeah you're car in a GT3. You're in. Then there was uh, I saw one of the Aston Martin like cup cars basically, which is probably some DB something. And then the car that he was constantly in front was a Porsche 917, which is an old Trans Am race car. Oh, okay. or Can Am race car. I'm sorry, yeah, an old Can Am race car from like the 70s. Yeah. So it, it they already showed, and it it looked great. Mm-hmm. It did. It looked fantastic. It, watching the trailer, I was like, I want to spend four thousand dollars and buy a full race. Yeah, sim. it looked fun to play, just on how like the driving was and everything. Yeah. So actually, listening when you when you get the good shifting, where you really hear the gear, like almost slamming the gears through, it just everything sounded great. Yeah. And it, I, I, I so badly just wanted to. I could almost see my hands like just coming up from my body and just give me the steering wheel and put me in one of the, put me in a racing chair and let me just give me. A, I so badly want one of those setups. A good one is you know, fifteen hundred dollars probably. Yeah, but a good. I don't even need the paddle shifting. Paddle shifting would be extra, but just a good steering wheel plus pedals in a single unit not like i clamp it onto my desk or something like mm-hmm. everything in a chair all locked into a single unit and then put that game in front of me i'm not gonna leave <laughs> i'll be there for a weekend oh what are you gonna do i gotta go race lama <laughs> what are you just doing like six laps or something that's yeah, saturday i got 24 hours <laughs> i got the night shift <laughs> have somebody do 12 hours in front of me and i'll come back into the other 12 hours yeah that's um that one i'm I'm really hoping and I'm kind of assuming is a launch title. I, I, I'm in the same boat, hoping and, and assuming it's a launch title. Uh, but I mean, even just going back to it, go watch that trailer. It, when you watch that trailer, if you have the same feeling as me, it almost feels like it will be a disservice to play it with a controller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, that it, was, <laughs> it was one of those Sims where I was like, I don't want to play it with a controller. It looks so nice. It looks fun to play to. too. I'm going to, but <laughs> it looks fun to play. But having played previous ones, I know it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be like the the learning curve is going to be really steep and really painful. But yeah, the first ten hours of us racing are going to be nightmarish, and then we're going to both have like one track each that we know very well and go. All right, I got this one. And then we'll purposely never never race each other on either of those tracks and only race on ones we don't understand. Whole thing. Uh, let's see, what else did we see? We also saw the new remake of Demon Souls from Blue Point Games and Japan Studio. So I know it's I know exactly what I'm going to do with this game because I did it with the first one. I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to play this game. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play probably four to six hours of it, and then I'm going to set it down and be like, man, I suck at Souls games. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Mm-hmm. Never pick it up. It looks, the remake looks really pretty. It does, which that's the alluring part. It looks pretty. It's got this deep lore, that lore, this wonderful like, like world that it, you know. But then it's like so complicated yeah, and so hard to play. It's a very um, Souls game. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I would, it really I would, is, but it's... I have no basis for this other than like the online like little bit of research I've done into the games and stuff. But I almost think that it, you could argue that, that Demon Souls is the most like complicated of the Souls games. Because like there's all the world shifting and shit that goes on like... Mm-hmm. Like if you die too much, like you can't do certain things because you're like your world, uh, whatever the fuck they're called, their world alignment is too black or whatever. It's like it's so weird. Hey man, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know either. But it know. looked pretty. It does look really good. Blue Point doing another remaster. They did uh, Shadow of the Colossus. So we'll see what's next on their list after this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now we can alternate indies, but I'll start. Indie titles. Take it the good one, I see. Do you, I'll give you it no, if you want kidding. it. <laughs> Do you not want the dating sim on the second one? <laughs> uh, indie titles got a lot of indie. They showed off. This was like a 50-ish to an hour. Was it over an hour? I think hour total, 30? it was an hour 15. Hour 15. So hour 15, but we got console, controller breakdown, and then a lot of games. Overall, very solid event. Yeah, that was good. It's what you want to see in these moments. Mm -hmm. Now, trickle out more things to me throughout the next few months, please. Keep tapping that vein. But the first indie is Bug Snacks from Young Horses, a whimsical narrative-driven adventure from the creators of Octodad. Investigate the mysterious Snacktooth Island, home of the legendary half-bug, half-snack, Bug Snacks creatures. (laughs) It looked real. I, I just want to know what the game is going to be. It's right. <laughs> because when you watch it, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I think I understand. But what's the game? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly. It's like, all right, this is cool. What's the game? Like, <laughs> Yeah, like, what am I doing? Is my goal to just collect everything? <laughs> collect everything? Air quotes? I do love everything. the trailer, though. Because, like, you have, like, the Steve Irwin-esque, like... Oh yeah! Oh, like oh, this one's so. This one looks. Look at great. this beauty! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, the seed patterns are great, and then just eat it. I'm just like, that, what the? <laughs> when I was watching it, and that whole sequence happens, and it's a uh, living strawberry just running around, and strawberry, strawberry, and then the thing picks it up, and it's like, oh yeah, and then it just eats it, and it's like, oh, that one tastes good too, and I'm just like, can you do that? Like, you just you just eating things, man. Just eating sentient. Oh man! And then I'm like, oh wait, well, I'm humans. I do that all the time. But <laughs> yeah, the whole trailer was interesting. Then you got the goofy song, and then like the goofy song, which <laughs> my uh, wiener hands. <laughs> appar- yeah, apparently people love the song. That's just been going around with people. Like I have it stuck in my head. It, it's catchy. Just half bug, half snack, bug snacks. You know, yep. that's just what it is. Uh, but yeah, the ending of it is. I was trying to do it with my wiener hands, and I dropped it. <laughs> The whole town's on fire again? Yep. And there was that creature at the end. Yeah, which Mm. was an amalgamation of like a bunch of things it looked like. So maybe there are villains that are just like a bunch of those creatures all like smashed together. Yep. Uh, I appreciate the donut head sprinkles for legs. Yep. The rib centipedes were pretty sweet. Yep. I like the the sandwich snakes, the sub sandwich snakes. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that was good. Those are, uh, what was the other? The apple crab. Yeah, there's just a lot going on in that game, uh, and I am definitely curious to see. It is what forty five seconds of a trailer, and we're over here talking about it like this. I mean, I well, I'm, like after Octodad, like after <laughs> multiple Octodads, there were a few, I think. So it's intriguing to see what comes next. Hmm. Half bug. I'm sure it won't. Uh, I can't imagine it disappointing. So I want an EDM remix of Half Bug, Half Snacks, Bug Snacks. So bad. We'll we'll look after this. I'm sure there is one. Just a lot of wubs, dubs, and bugs, and snacks, bug snacks. Uh, let's see here. Moving on for more indies, we had Goodbye Volcano High from Co-op, a cinematic narrative game that touches on love, friendship and self-realization in the final days of civilization. One of those bizarre indie games. I was when when this trailer started, I did not expect it. 
yeah. the entire way through, yeah. I was just like, what is this? And then, <laughs> then they, it, like, it becomes more apparent, like, halfway through. I'm like, oh, no. And then it gets to the end, and I was just like, they just showed that at a, at a PlayStation event. Shit. And it's not, like, anything, like, it's not offensive or anything. No. But you just don't see games like this, either, like, relationship sims or high school sims or, or any of these type of sims usually shown off in a also console reveal event. Yeah. Uh, so it was, y- the characters are dinosaurs. Yes. Like in a humanoid ask form. Like they look yeah. like uh, high schoolers. Maybe I would say, Oh really? The title doesn't tell you they're high schoolers, Matt. Is it high school volcano? Okay. Yeah. So high schoolers, <laughs> sorry, brain fart. <laughs> High yeah, schoolers. They, I think they do look like high schoolers. <laughs> uh, well, they look like dinosaurs, but I get fair enough. They look like high school dinosaurs. Uh, yeah. So, it, it, and I think Goodbye Volcano High might be like just them. I assume you're progressing towards something happening. Yeah. So, where like, not necessarily Volcano High disappears, <laughs> but everything disappears. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks interesting for sure. Uh, I'm wondering if it's like. I don't know. There's so many directions it could take. I want there to be one dinosaur that's wearing like the uh, oh god, I don't remember what they're called the the poster boards. They're they're not bread boards. Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking the, about the the, the like end the, of days. You the know, the board end sign near. with like the rope, and you wear it like yeah. That. You basically just have two ropes that are over your shoulders attached to two boards, and they're that. And I just want one dinosaur. The to end just is be nigh. Just, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. But I just want it to be like the comet's coming <laughs> or something, and they all just constantly put them off and keep. You just see him in like the background of shots mm-hmm. as they're all dealing with this whole thing, and then you see him at the end, like I told you, I told every one of you. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Yeah, it was a uh, hit you right in the feels. Yeah, it was. It was definitely an interesting title to see on there. Uh, up next, we have Jet the Far Shore from Super Brothers and Pine Scented, a bittersweet interstellar trip to a mythical ocean planet in this narrative-driven action adventure featuring an emotional mix of storytelling and world exploration. I didn't say, like, three of those words because I slurred really bad. For some reason, I don't remember this game. I believe this was the one that, when I saw it, I thought um, Abzu. Because you were, like, swimming through water, and it was this whole thing, and I was just like, it looks pretty. Looks interesting. If I'm wrong, well, then you should go watch the trailer for yourself. Because we were only here to give you ideas. But yeah, it definitely it looked interesting. I mean, I definitely watched it. I just don't recall yeah, watching there, it. I mean, there's a lot of... <laughs> there were a lot of things in there to remember. Every, and we just tried to watch a bunch of trailers before this again. So we could remember. And it's still like, oh, hey, there's a lot of this. Or there's a lot of this. <clears throat> Anything you want to say on it before I move on? Um, not uh, particularly, but I am just double checking real quick that I'm not crazy. Hold on. Do 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 do. You guys like videos? <laughs> videos in your podcast? Uh. It does say propelled by dreams, but I don't know if they mean there's actual dreams. Oh, it's this one. That's sorry, that's not the Abzu one. Go back twenty seconds. Like where everything's just going through space, and then you're down on a planet flying around. And do you not remember that? I remember now that I see the trailer. Nope, don't remember that at all. Well, welcome to live editing a podcast. <laughs> Maybe I fell asleep during that one. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Uh, next up is uh, Kenna. Was it Kenna? Uh, it- that's how I believe it to be pronounced. Uh, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits from Ember Lab, a story-driven action-adventure game combining exploration and discovery with fast-paced combat. It looked uh, it looked interesting, well polished. Kind of had like a um, uh, what's that Xbox game? Ori of the Blind Forest vibe going on there. Yeah, it it, it kind of had an Ori thing, except that it it's not a platforming two D screen. 
uh i know what you mean though i had a like, like an a ori cutie forest type feel. yeah like an, the ori ambiance going on kind of i i went to like pixar how to tame your dragon oh yeah that feels. works too yeah uh but mixed with not souls ask because that's kind of weird but you are in these areas fighting these large boss, almost Shadow Colossus kind of too. You're fighting these large bosses to cleanse the area mm-hmm. and have it return to whatever nature or whatever. Definitely looked interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, it looks interesting. I don't think like for some reason it like didn't, it kind of, I don't want I don't know. I guess it kind of turned me off. Like I looked at it. I was like, it looks, it looks like it looks good objectively. Um, I just didn't have any like personal interest in it. If that makes any sense. I yeah. It. I mean, nothing in that I saw in it immediately went. I need to play that. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it falls under. Like going back to our Ratchet Clank idea, it's probably right below that in terms of. I'm intrigued to see how it all does. But it doesn't have my. I'm tempted to play it yet. Yeah. Maybe they'll show more where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm kind of in the mood for a potentially chill boss fighting type style game, but I don't know. Not yet. Uh, the next one we get little devil in the little, I think it's the little devil, the little devil inside from Neo stream interactive. Set in a Victorian-like era, embark on dangerous missions to gain evidence and findings for your employer, a mysterious professor. Uh, this so one... you're basically Indiana Jones is lackey? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Except he's actually a professor and not out doing things. <laughs> uh, this game I actually kind of was, I thought was interesting. Like that, that one I was like, ah, I might play this, like... Uh, looked cool. Um, had a cool art style. Yeah. Uh, gameplay looked interesting. Um, it did catch some flack for its representation of people. Um, I don't know if you caught that at all. I didn't, but I, I believe it. Um, which I think the when developers, I think back to it, I, yeah, I think the developers like said that wasn't our intention, and we're we'll change it. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, it was. The uh, art style of it was, I've seen, I, I don't know what that art style is called. It's not voxel and it's not other things. It's not mm-hmm. almost like paper is a way to kind of do it because it's mm-hmm. you know the flat surface is almost kind of folded. Uh, or it it's it's like paper claymation. I, that, that's so weird. But yeah, it's like it's like almost like stop motion, yeah, animated hand painted type weird vibe going so if any of that makes any sense to you you should go watch the trailer for the little devil inside uh the trailer's cut well yeah it is it's a good trailer the the bomb drop the whole joke yeah there's no real gameplay in it but it does look like an interesting if you're actually i wonder if you're you know if you're going back to this to the city where the professor is and then he's giving you this task to go out into these places or like how those two Mm -hmm. how you go between the two be interesting yeah like it was just level after level after level and like right or if they actually if it's like open have worlds a, of some kind yeah either an open world thing or even if even if it's just level after level but they break it up with having the conversation of like you bringing back the artifact or failing to bring back an art if there is a failure system type thing where you go you have to go have that conversation with him mm-hmm. about failing mm-hmm. or is he a hard ass you know, there's yeah character development things you almost seem in the trailer they make you seem timid yeah almost brave little toaster style like i'm gonna go fight the big monster i don't want (laughs) to fight the big monster so i don't know next up (laughs) we have odd world soul storm from Oddworld Inhabitants, a major visual and cinematic lead for the celebrated series, uh, Leap, I'm assuming. Is that, that was yeah, go with Leap. Yeah. Leap sounds better. Uh, with intelligent new gameplay mechanics and twisted new devices to enable explosive deviousness. From Oddworld Inhabitants, quote, 
Oddworld, Soulstorm, Scope, and Scale are larger than we have tackled before. We plan to use PS5 stunning graphic fidelity, mind-blowing 3D audio, and the DualSense controller to enhance our storytelling and artistic abilities to bring you closer to the game and to create an even deeper emotional Oddworld experience, end quote. Wasn't Oddworld somewhat comedic before? I think so. At least I, that's what I always took away from it. That's what I remember it. Same. Never played the game, though. Yeah. So now I'm wondering if I'm wrong. Same. Because <laughs> this was like a really kind of dark trailer. Yeah. I was watching it, and then I saw Oddworld, and I was like... I mean, even the guy in the beginning, like, or whoever did the VO for it, ever, was like, oh, it's funny. Like, there's some funny parts. They said they mentioned something about there being, like, comedic elements or it being funny. And then I watched the trailer, and I was like what yeah it was i mean it was a good trailer yeah but definitely had the had the questions that we're having where i'm like i don't I, it, mm, is it fu- is it funny i remember <laughs> funny but this just seems dark ha 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 nervous laughter it does look good I, it, it's it's also cool to see they're the first in this rundown that we have they're like one of the first people that are really saying anything about the DualSense controller, and we didn't even touch on it because they also did another breakdown uh, during the hardware mm. part where they showed, not to take away from Oddworld, but real quick, they showed the what I assume is going to be the gold headset for this generation. They showed the dual charging stand, and they showed the camera. Mm-hmm. And the media remote. And the media remote. Just like, hey, here's other things you can buy when you pick up your console. But then they also did the controller breakdown, a USB-C charging port, uh, built-in mic, headphone jack, adaptive triggers, which is a, a big thing. It's supposed to have haptic feedback, too. So dual shock is out. Dual sense is in. Haptic feedback and adaptive triggers can make a lot of these games feel a lot better. Yeah. Especially when we hit Horizon. Like if if Oddworld's toting what they're gonna do with it, if I can have that bow and have adaptive tree and all that feel, it's gonna be mm-hmm. so much better. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's one of those things that's interesting because it's hard to translate that without just saying, "Oh, it's haptic and adaptive." You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, hard you to can, like. You can tell me all you want. If I don't <clears throat> feel it when I'm playing it, mm-hmm. it's, it doesn't mean anything to me. That's why I think you see the big disconnect with the whole 3D audio thing. Like, they touted the 3D audio at the tech demo, but, like, you can't really represent that. It's the same thing going back to PS4. If people did crazy audio, and it's what we talk about with RTXing, where, or, well, not RTXing, with um, ray tracing, you can ray trace audio too. Mm -hmm. Ray tracing isn't just for lighting, ray tracing can be done for audio, and that changes fundamentally how you can hear things. And make games that much more immersive and problematic if it's a horror game. (laughs) Yeah. Can you imagine if someone did a stealth game with ray traced lighting and audio? Can you imagine Splinter Cell? Yeah. Or Outlast? Yeah. With With, those things? With those things. Be a fucking nightmare. Yeah. I'd be shitting my pants in Outlast. Like Outlast 2, I think you sneak through a cornfield at one point and it's like, nope. I'd rather not. I'm yeah. good. But yeah, Odd World. There you go. Yeah, Odd World. Very odd. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out more, I'm sure. The Pathless from Giant Squid slash Annapurna. Annapurna showed up big. Oh, yeah, they did. A few times. Humble showed up big, too, but not for this. That's for the next episode. Teaser. The uh, So, The Pathless from Giant Squid and Annapurna. The mythical... Sorry, mythic tale of an archer and an eagle in a vast forest who ventured to a mystical island to dispel a curse of darkness. Ooh. Ooh. Ominous. I don't remember this one either. (laughs) Go check it out. Matt, read my favorite one from them. Stray. From Blue 12 Studio and Annapurna. A little cat in a futuristic walled city, devoid of life, befriends a sentient drone. The cat must find its way home and perhaps help the city along the way. Yeah, this one looked really fucking good. 
Like, I don't know. There's just a the whole concept of it. The way it looked, I was like, mm. I was watching the whole thing and I'm seeing all the robots. I'm just like, I don't want to play a robot. <laughs> I'm intrigued, but I don't want to play a robot. And then I saw the cat and I was like, oh, am I, I going to be a cat? Do I get to be a cat? Oh, I get to be a cat and I get a sweet backpack. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. That one was one of those ones that like, I think kind of went viral and people were like, yeah, this is it. The stray. Th- this is one of them. There's also, an <laughs> there were a few cat games. Cats making a comeback. Yeah. Cat strong. Yeah, be cat strong. <laughs> the uh, the trailer was uh, it wasn't futuristic. I mean, yeah, there's robots, but it wasn't a future, and it wasn't a vaporwave, but it was just a urban neon lighting mm-hmm. type environment. Yeah, there's probably some term for that. Yeah, I wanted to say a uh, a uh, Tokyo street raining in the dark. Because you always see those shots. I mean, where that's it's just neon that hits lights, it right where there. it's just neon lights everywhere, and there's a <clears> bunch <throat> of store signs, and there's neon lights, dark, dingy, rain. Yeah, some people walking around, other people not. Yeah, you know, just. But, I get to play as a cat. Yeah. So I'll take it. Also from Annapurna, was Solar Ash from Heart Machine. A journey through a surreal and vivid world filled with mystery, endearing characters, and massive enemy encounters across a vast, vast open world. Don't remember this one either. I was waiting for it. (laughs) Go watch the trailer. I must have fallen asleep at some point. You might have because it was like after... I remember, I remember like I sat down to watch it and it was like, I was like mad fucking tired. And I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to make it through this one. I got like one text from you during it. I was all right. Well, (laughs) he's watching it. He's watching it. Good deal. Cause it was, it was the beginning. You tweeted me at the beginning. You messaged me at the beginning when it was Jim Ryan, uh, Jim Ryan's no Sean Layden. And then there was just, I never heard anything else. And I was like, (laughs) did he finish the conference? I feel like you would have said something at some point. (laughs) Well, I saw like it was that, and then I was like watching it, and then like Shu showed up at some point. I'm like, yep, yeah, Shu cool. showed Shoe, up. Shu, and then I don't Shoe know. Shu showed maybe, up for a Demon Souls, I believe. Maybe I like got up for a drink or something. I don't know. Neither do I. It's not like I was watching it live either, so I don't, I don't know why I wouldn't have just like paused it if that was the case. So yeah, maybe you did fall asleep. Wouldn't be the first time either of us has watching things. All right, we're moving into third-party games here. We're going to start off with a quick little rehash of GTA V. Um, uh, let's see here. So GTA V for PS5 is going to have some uh, technical improvements, some visual upgrades, and some performance enhancements, which is pretty standard fare. As trend, like, you know, from the PS3 to the PS4, we got some of that shit as well. So now we're just going to make it last for a third console. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see here. And then there's going to be, well, we already, we already talked about that. Uh, standalone version of GTA online for PS5 will be free for three months on the, on the PS5. Yeah. We didn't discuss that part, but that is a big. Yeah. Just three months. There's just the online part. Yep. Just online. So that way you don't have to have the massive story download as well. Squashes any idea of, uh, Possible story DLC. Yeah, no. That's gone. That was long gone years ago, but I keep just hoping. Hoping slightly. I'm wondering if you know how they did the whole like you get a million dollars a month until the launch of That's what they are doing that. So like do you have to log in to get that? Or if I just log in, will it just all be sitting there? You know what I mean? No, I believe you have to log in to claim it. Claim. Like once a month, you have to log in to to claim the money. Mm. Yeah, I believe they only do mm. like they drop it when your account is on. Ah, uh, darn! That means I'd have to put in effort. That also means I'd have to play GTA again. Yeah, I've had my moment, and I'm not spending three hundred dollars to catch up and online. So, yeah, that was that was you know what I was alluding to. <laughs> 
Uh, the next one we saw was Ghostwire Tokyo from Tango Gameworks and Bethesda Softworks. From Bethesda, quote, from Shinji Mikami and the team at Tango Gameworks comes Ghostwire Tokyo, a next-gen action-adventure game coming to consoles exclusively for PlayStation 5 in 2021. Tango Gameworks has taken full advantage of the power of the PS5's next-gen hardware to create a stunning, immersive, and mysterious world to experience. Explore the streets of a city filled with the spirits and mysterious otherworldly treats, threats, and treats, probably, with an arsenal of powerful abilities at your command, end quote. Uh, so interesting that it is a console PS5 exclusive. It will be still released on PC at the same time. So, yeah. Uh, it makes me more likely to play it because I most likely can find it cheaper on PC. Whereas, like, at full price, like, looking at it, I, I, for our interests, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't strike us. Uh, I'm happy to see more of it at least Mm -hmm. because other than when it was announced, we saw nothing. Yeah. (laughs) And then like radio silent. And then the lady there left. Yes. And I was like, oh no, like that game's dead. Yeah. She comes out as the beloved part of E3 and then less than a month later is gone. And we're just left going, oh. Do you need me to grab you something? Or you no, try not to sneeze. Oh, okay. I've never seen that method. It, it seems to work, so. Hey, fair enough. Rolling with it. <laughs> uh, Godfall from Counterplay Games. Uh, quote, You are the last of the Valerian Knights, godlike warriors able to equip Valor Plates, legendary armor sets that transform wielders into unstoppable masters of melee combat. Players will tear through foes as they climb through some of the elemental realms. Uh, We're still hard at work and can't wait for players to experience Godfall when it makes its console debut on PS5 and launches on PC this holiday season. End quote. So another timed console exclusive and another holiday release. And Godfall looks pretty. Every time I look at it, though, you know what we can't help but see. Yeah. Too human. Every time. Every time I see it, I'm just like, ooh. It also reminds me of the game that I had you buy and download and then never played with you. Uh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> the first one, I think it was. The... It's God something, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It is God. It's God mode. God mode, yeah. Similar concept, though. You're, you're kind of like a god who's like fighting and fighting foes and with different weapons and stuff. It It, it looks pretty. It does. It does look It's another one where I'm definitely intrigued, but I feel like it'll have to be a a mood thing for me. Yeah. Sometimes those melee games, I just have to be... If I'm not in the mood, I'm not going to continue with it. It it might catch you at the right time. It might not. Yeah. Uh, Next came Project Athea from Luminous Productions and Square Enix. Quote, Project Athea is a culmination of our philosophy here at Luminous Productions to create completely new and fresh gaming experiences that fuse together the latest technologies with art. With the PS5, our vision truly comes to life, and with Project Athea, players can look forward to being transported to a vast and detailed world filled with beauty and dismay. End quote. Uh, it definitely looked good. Um, I have a disdain for the whole like project thing. I know I never like the idea of project being in a title. Project being in a title is fine if you were discussing demos, tech demos, tech demos, or uh, like, new new consoles, like the whole yeah. Project Scarlet thing and stuff yeah. like that. All that's fine, but when you come to actually give me your game, I don't want to be told if projects in the title. That's fine. Mm-hmm. If that's the actual title is Project Athea, that's fine. But I don't know that it is. Yeah. Which, unless they specify it, is usually not the case. Whenever I see like a project whatever like this, yeah, Project Athea, I immediately assume, okay, this is like like a concept car to an automotive company. Like, right. you're not going to actually... This game's never going to make it out of the door the way it stands. It's w- where you want your... Even developer if, to head yeah or even i would guess that <sighs> you dump project off and it becomes athea colon uh a, a world reborn type you know something yeah. something along those lines where it athea becomes the main title because it's probably the character's name and then you get the subtitle underneath it but project athea i always yeah that's that's the only gripe we really have because the thing looks beautiful yeah all the the stuff that they did with 
uh, graphic. Like you see the the dragon at one point that has the flaming like lava chest. Yeah, that looked absolutely sweet. The dog walking with it looked cool. Her magic abilities, like the was it thorns and roots that she summons mm-hmm. on the ground at one point. I'm, I'm in. That could be a lot of fun. So, oh yeah, for sure. At some point, whenever we get this game, I'll I'll probably be giving this one a solid look. Agreed. <clears throat> Hitman Three from IO Interactive. Uh, Hitman Three is the dramatic conclusion to the World of Assassination trilogy, and will put you back into the shoes and stylist suit of Agent Forty Seven a ruthless professional assassin who must take on the most important contracts of his career. Nice to see in uh, Hitman 3. Hitman, when it got this, the beginning of the trilogy, everybody's, oh, cool, new Hitman, fun times. Then we got Hitman 2, which included Hitman 1 at launch. And then everybody's like, Hitman 2, I can throw a briefcase at people. And it's really funny and really entertaining. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. But every time after their story ends or the story whatever they drop the contracts one of them was to kill sean bean i think what wasn't one of them at one point to kill uh oh no who's crazy who is that crazy actor crazy actor his mind's gone basically gary Busey. gary Busey, i believe was a hidden target at one point (laughs) uh so they they have ways of of keeping you going back but I'm happy to see that there is a third one to the trailer looked good. I didn't realize it was Hitman until they almost slapped me in the face with it. Yeah. <laughs> you're like unsure. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh wait, this is, this is Hitman, Obviously I was like, Oh man, a really cool. All right. Stealth game. Doing Agent some 47 stuff, ball guys. And then all you hear is just Agent 47. I'm like, Oh shit. It's Hitman. <laughs> Which is probably how every enemy in that game reacts where they're just like, Oh, you <laughs> Hitman dead. <laughs> Uh, then we move to the one sports game we saw NBA 2K21 subtitled Sweat <laughs> <laughs> NBA 2K21 from 2K Sports. Uh, they stopped by to give an eye popping first look at pre alpha PS5 development footage of NBA 2K21. I don't know if it scares me that it's pre alpha when the game launches in October. I was just going to ask, <laughs> when did these normally come out? Right. <laughs> uh, but NBA 2K is a proven formula. Hopefully they leverage the system for good and not how many microtransactions can we fit into our game. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want some of that ray traced sweat. The orig- it's, <laughs> it's funny because we, we watched that trailer. It, the trailer is, I don't know, a minute, 10 seconds or whatever. And... You see the first ISO shot of uh, Zion Williamson and is the player for the New Orleans Pelicans that I believe is also probably a cover athlete. And they have, it's like his chin to his neck or like right where the collar is on the jersey. And they show that part and you see sweat and it looks like somebody just drew lines on him for sweat. And it isn't until they actually show his face a little bit later where you actually see more like true beads of sweat and everything. And I'm like, okay. I get it. 2K, you guys love sweat. <laughs> <laughs> but, and even pre-alpha footage, it was pre-alpha non-gameplay. It was just... Yeah. It was just like a... They were just showing opening, essentially cinematics. Like an opening cinematic to the game or yeah. something. It's So, I'm hoping for the 2K fans that it's what they want and that you get more of whatever you're looking for. I could be so generic with this entire statement. <laughs> I hope you get more of whatever you're looking for when this game launches later this year. Sounds like you're breaking up with someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen. I hope you get what you want. I hope you not, find what you're looking for. It's not you. It's, it's you. <laughs> but it's the whole... Uh, you Usually when you get into the next... It, it's for me, what I look at at sports games, when you're getting to the new console... You now have more power. So fundamentally fix things or really show me things that you wanted to do before that you couldn't. Or you either wanted to do before that you couldn't or you (laughs) did poorly or you see it a lot with FIFA where they're like, ooh, we added new moves or something, something. And I'm like, the AI still doesn't know what he's doing. And also, why does that guy look like he has only half of a face? (laughs) 
Like there's just certain things where, or like at the, why do they only look really good in the cinematic? They should look good the entire time. Yeah. And 2K does a pretty good job of making them look good the entire time. But, you know, I'm just saying. I want to see what sports games like that, that have to manage a lot of people usually. The show's one, when show shows up on PS5, I am hoping for something crazy. And by crazy, I mean just better than the year previous. <laughs> I'm not expecting them to give me the motion control so I can swing the bat. Not expecting that. I'm just expecting that. You, I, I don't think you'd want that either, would you? The controller has motion controls, Matt. And you know what happens every time they put motion controls in there. We abuse it for the first year of the console before everybody goes, that's a stupid idea. Let's not do it. If anybody forgets Infamous Second Son, where you had to spray paint by literally taking your dual shock and turning it on its side to shake the can. Oh. Same thing with a touchpad. Didn't uh, one of the touchpad Grand Turismo's use things? it as well, like for turning? You might have been I think you could have the option to do that. Yeah, like you could like uh, accentuate you could like turn harder if you like. Yeah. Uh same thing. All that all those weird new controller things where they had the speaker in the dual shock. So some at some point my GTA broke and I could no longer hear phone calls. Mm-hmm. Uh but they were supposed to be coming through the dual shock, yep. but I had muted the dual shock. So Lester calls me and I'm just like, I have no idea. I'm gonna wait for the quest marker to pop up. Oh, there it is, and I just <laughs> I'm gonna go about my day. The light bar was cool. The light bar was cool. I mean, and that was really cool in GTA because yeah, I mean, you could the actually, red and blue, yeah, flashing. the cop lights are on and stuff. But the the tech abuse of, all right, mm-hmm. we have these new things. Let's use them. Not, hey, we have these new things. If you can find a good use for it, use it. Yeah. Especially because we're talking about the built-in mic mm-hmm. when we were downstairs, and we're like, I can't wait for me to have to call out plays on the sideline in NBA Two K. Because they, yeah. the game's like, use the built-in mic to call for a triangle three. You want a pick to shoot in the corner. And it's just like, how about I don't? How about I press yeah. triangle and that happens? <clears throat> or they're like, uh, until dawn, you know, don't make any noise. And you fucking sneeze and yeah. next thing you know, you're dead. Which, <clears throat> I those ones I would at least appreciate a little bit more where you're playing those horror things. Because mm-hmm. the until dawn and uh, Man of Medan and the new one that's coming out for the... You go to the village and the church and the whole thing. Yeah. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah. When you go there, they do don't move and they base your movement on the controller moving. It's like, okay, those are cool, cool little things just because it's supposed to be a, you know, uh, teenage horror movie type style. Uh, but the, the don't talk one would be really a double down if, you know, you have your, your character has their hand over their mouth. And they're like, just be quiet. And you just have your one friend that's like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Ruins the entire game for you. So it's like, I hope they don't do something like that. Yeah. It's... Or at least let me disable it so that doesn't happen. Yeah. But anyway, I I digress. Uh, let's see here. Deathloop from Arcane Studios and Bethesda Softworks. Quote, we will, with stunning and stylish environments... Memorable combat encounters and the freedom to tackle each mission at any pace and with any approach you choose. This is arcane like you've never seen or felt it before. Uh, built with next gen in mind. Deathloop is being developed for a next gener- new generation of hardware and will launch on console exclusively for PlayStation 5. Um, my issue with this game is that it looks like and plays like all of Arcane's other games. Dishonored. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like I take a little bit of offense with. I I know what you mean. It's mm-hmm. stylistically the same thing. Yep. But it definitely doesn't look same style. I'll yeah. stop there. Cause same style. I'm going to start, you know, nitpicking a conversation I don't need to. Uh, but stylistically, it is. you can tell it's an arcane game, which isn't a bad thing. No. But it's just got to be your thing. It has to be your thing. Uh, I like the idea, though. The concept for the game, and I don't have any—I don't have any problem against their their style. Uh, I think it hurts it a little bit more in Dishonored for me, but that's just because of the way Dishonored is. But in in this game, the concept of you're stuck, the one character mm-hmm. is stuck on this island and is constantly trying to escape, 
but every time he dies, he gets reset back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's like a mind prison almost. Kind of, yeah. And then, if anybody's watched Watchmen, knows as a you know, the whole thing, but uh, (laughs) the, then there's the other character that, there's also just random NPCs on the island, and that's who he's normally fighting, trying to get away is to deal with all the random NPCs. But then there is another character that is not that, that is there to stop them. So I believe you have the option of playing one or the other to do that. Or there might also be a, there might be a PVP element, but I don't think that's announced. I'm not positive, Mm -hmm. but it would be interesting to play both. You're either trying to stop the CPU who's just like sneaking around or you are playing against the CPU who's trying to stop you. Yeah. Maybe you play as both. And, uh, you know, depending on mission outcomes, it changes the story. Oh, that'd be interesting. You fail one, so it flips you to the other. Yeah. Hmm. That'd be interesting. It would be. I don't fucking know. Or you like you play one, then you flip to playing the other one, but that CPU now follows roughly the same path you took. Mm-hmm. So you try to like piece it all together, how you need to get out that way type of thing. Yeah, maybe. I'm intrigued. I mean, I, I mean, definitely I like, I like the idea of the story, but I never was arcane style of gameplay and their style of visuals and stuff. I don't dislike them, but they never appealed to me. I do remember having problem. I played the first Dishonored. I didn't play Dishonored 2, but I, playing the first Dishonored, I had like vision problems sometimes like running through levels and whatever Mm -hmm. but i don't think that was due to their art style i think it was the way that like you had to you could move fast in that game and and kind of do things and it was like blur and it would like fuck with me and i couldn't do it but Mm -hmm. i'm intrigued by this so i'm gonna keep it's one it's one i'm keeping an eye on (laughs) oh the next game we got resident evil village from capcom Resident Evil Village, by the way, the way you get to tell this is it's Resident Evil. <laughs> did you see how they did this? Yeah. And then V-I-L-L for eight. So yep. that is how you get Resident Evil 8. Resident Evil Village from Capcom, quote, The fear of dark corners has been replaced with the anxiety of the unknown as Ethan searches for answers within decrepit buildings around among snow-covered trees. The return of a first-person perspective will bring a visceral edge to combat with a greater focus on combat and exploration compared to Resident Evil 7. The village itself is just as important a character as any other, a location with a life of its own that will frequently keep you on edge as you discover its secrets. Spooky. I'm not a Resident Evil guy, but I thought it was uh, kind of interesting that, I don't know, did they haven't really done a game as similar to this, have they? Like the, the, mean, the setting? I don't think the setting, not necessarily. I mean, the first person, one of seven, is is the first person blah blah blah, but mm-hmm. the setting I think is the is very interesting. Yeah, and I'm I don't play Resident Evil games. Yeah, I don't either. I've never I've never had the urge to play them. I tried playing a few of the earlier ones, um, and I just got irritated with the whole, you know, walk, stop, shoot thing. And so I never got. Well, yeah, there's that problem in the early ones. Yeah. yeah, so I never got you know I never got into it, and then like it just passed by me. And now I'm just like, uh, that's a thing that's over there. That... I love I love watching Ray play because mm-hmm. it's just it's a nice. Uh, it can be a nice like mindless game to just have on where I don't need to pay attention to it, but I can still watch it get played. But I myself have no interest in playing it. Mm-hmm. But it it looks very good. Yeah, I mean, looks... seven looked really good. Mm-hmm. Eight looks better. Yeah, they've been killing it lately too. So yeah. Uh, I mean, some people would argue that three isn't killing it, but three looks great. So, yeah. Uh, last, we have Pragmata. Pragmata? Pragmata. We're going to go with Pragmata on this one. America. Uh, also from Capcom. Uh, and who thought Capcom was dead? <laughs> yeah, they're making a comeback. Mostly with Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's all, all I know about it. I don't, I don't even remember this one, I don't think. Prag- Pragmata. I remember it, but I also remember the entire time going, what am I looking at? Pragmata. 
trying to remember what it was. Oh no, my brain is Matt failing fell me. fell asleep during the video. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. Only time will tell. I, I like the idea. <laughs> oh, that's Pragmata. We know what Pragmata is. Oh, that's the uh, Kojima-esque. Kojima-esque. Yeah. yeah. The ki- that's a genre now. Kojima is a genre. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the genre show. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck that was. Um, it, Kojima. Uh, I don't it, know. It falls into the. Uh, it's not. Ko- first off, it's not Kojima. Yeah. We just say it's Kojima esque because I have as much questions as when I watch a Kojima trailer that I do now. And yep. watching that, I just went, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. And it kind of looks. That's a spaceman. That child. <laughs> Robot skeleton kitty. Moon, Bro- broken sky, moon. <laughs> yeah, we got hit by a satellite. Nope, we got a green protective web. Because child is cyber with green eye thing. I the charge whole... charge your weapon up. I don't know. Yeah, I shot canister in air, sea sparkles. I, I the whole thing. Yep, it's a thing. It is a thing that we. I'm intrigued to see what more of that. Everything means. we just said is 100 percent accurate. By the way. Yeah. No. 100. percent So, take that as you will. Yeah. Go take a look at it and then see if you can figure out what it is and tell us. Don't read anything else. Just watch the trailer then tell us. Don't, you know. Don't cheat. Yeah, no cheating. You don't, you have to guess based on your own knowledge. <laughs> that's, just, that's what That's we your did. homework for the week. Yeah, so that's all, all. That's all the PlayStation 5 reveal, air quotes, event. Yeah. It was solid. I think it was better than the Xbox one. Yeah, I think Xbox has an event in July that mm-hmm. I assume is supposed to be their actual like answer to this, where I assume we would see things like Halo and mm-hmm. their other big holiday gut punch things. Yeah, I think we get another big event from Sony as well. Oh, I think we get more than one. I think we get another event from Sony that shows off some other stuff. And also, I think we don't get a PlayStation blog post on price. Mm-hmm. I think we get a event on price mm-hmm. and then a detail like in that same event, it's a price plus the detailed breakdown we're missing on the consoles. Yeah. Which would be like UI console features, like the, the shit, the console itself can actually do yeah. with, with the almost games. like them showing off the experience that you're going to get. Yeah. I, my ideal preference would be to see them almost turn it on you know Mm -hmm. you see you see a uh a real life turned video demo where you see somebody like walk into a a living room press power on that pick up the controller and sit down and the camera zooms into the screen you get to hear the noise the logo it shows you the home ui they pick uh like they pick star uh not Star Wars. They pick Spider Man, load into Spider Man, play some Spider Man. Just five minutes, not even. They back out. They play Gran Turismo. It's gonna be. Let me edit that a little bit. It's gonna be that, but they'll be playing Spider Man. They'll get a notification for a voice chat from their friend. They'll click the PlayStation button, and then immediately they'll they will the conversation will jump in from the mic and the the controller speaker, and they'll be like, "Hey, we're in GT Seven right now, getting ready to do a race. Hop in." bump the yep. transfer yep <laughs> it'll be all all of those things that's what i want to see i want to see the full navigation of that stuff mm-hmm. uh and then go from there yeah I, I mean after that if you don't drop price in that i'm super disappointed but if you drop po- a price in that really you can experience all these things starting <laughs> at this price point they took my tortillas like the whole <laughs> the whole Getting thing. The chopper yeah um would be yeah. the event I need to see from them. Xbox needs to have their big game event because their, their first last, party game event. Yeah, yeah, their first party game event. Their last two, the indie stuff, while it was good, or the indie slash third party, while there were decent games in there, because obviously Valhalla is a good game. Obviously, Dirt is a good game. The other ones left tons of questions. Mm-hmm. Visually, did not look good based on what you showed. Even if there are uploaded things after that looked much better, you needed you need to come out with a much more professional, yeah, like drive. 
something we're going to talk about in the next episode, the Gorilla Collective, looked more professional than Microsoft. Yeah. The Sony one, you have people in, which I don't know if you saw the whole thing where everybody started speculating that all the presenters were CGI. Yeah. Which, my favorite joke, but the, you have people doing actual silhouetted things. Like, yes, the, we went through the pandemic and blah, blah, blah. But there's still a way to get an entire professional presentation out Mm -hmm. without doing that yeah so we'll see we'll see how it goes yeah i i do suspect the the next xbox event which i am assuming they're gonna bill as their like first party game event and everything it needs to be their first party game event i think it'll it will be very much closer to this what we just saw from playstation yeah it needs to be their first party event slash indie third party Mm -hmm. like you can show off everything you showed off before but they need to be in smaller segments. Just like, hey, remember these things that we did? Here's one minute maybe, vertical slices. Maybe real gameplay. Yeah, here's one minute vertical slices. Here's some actual gameplay. Or just don't tout gameplay. Do one of the two. Don't say gameplay or actually show gameplay. And then show what it means for Halo because that is what you are banking on for yeah. us. That's what Microsoft needs to bank on is what does it mean for Halo? Yeah. So we'll see. We will see. Uh, I have one deal to shout out, Matt. What's that deal? That deal, if it loads, I will hand you the tablet. Ooh, am I going to load first? I might load first. <gasps> Weird deals. Is it Humble Bundle? Yes, but it's not the choice one. So if you clicked on the choice one, you're wrong. <laughs> Shit, you loaded first. But I clicked on choice. Okay, then here. <clears throat> it is a Code Masters bundle, Mashu. Well, will you look at that? <clears throat> okay, pay a dollar or more, and you'll get Grid, Autosport, Toy Box Turbos, Overlord 2, and Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. If you pay 602. Or the more. Current, the current average. Which is the current average. The average could go up or down. Uh, you will get F1 2018. F1 2018 Headline Content Pack DLC. Dirt Rally. Dirt 4 DLC. Dirt 4. More Dirt 4 DLC. If you pay $15 or more, you'll get all of the above and F1 2019 and Dirt Rally 2.0. That's a lot of fucking racing games. That's a lot of racing. I mean, Codemasters, racing games. Makes sense. So, hey, if you want to jump in to racing games like Matt and I did with Project Cars 2, there they are. There they are. F1 2019, I hear, is is pretty good. Yeah, I've watched a a few YouTubes on it, and it's entertaining to watch, but it's also not for me. Just because I don't don't know that world enough to, to race those. And then Dirt Rally, the Dirt Rally games are pretty, pretty dope. They are rally games. They are there. If you like rally, like you really like rally, Dirt Rally, Dirt Rally. You like rally, Dirt Rally, Rally, Rally. <laughs> yeah, Rally Sim games. All right. Uh, it's been seven days. I'm not going to do this on the next episode, but it's been seven days since we've uh, recorded, Matt. That's a lie. It's been ten, but you know, for aesthetic reasons, it's been seven. What have you been up to? Uh, nothing super exciting. Um, I mean, I haven't really played a ton of games due to work life. Um, I did. I'm still. Nothing's changed. Still ch- chopping away at Snow Runners. Still, you know, hitting up Alien Scumbag every once in a great, great while. Um, watching the same stuff, just anime, really. Um, some documentaries every once in a while, mostly doing the ancient world stuff, you know, mm. ancient Rome, uh, Mayan stuff. Um, I think that's it. I don't think I've watched, I watched V for Vendetta, but I think I watched that last week. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm Started watching. <laughs> What's up? I'm getting real hungry. I can feel myself. Uh, watching the second season of Kaigasama Love is War. That's all one title. 
Oh, yeah, I forget. <laughs> um, it's fantastic. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. How about you? What are you doing? You know, I'm doing the usual as as the cards dictate. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> as the cards dictate. No, it's been a a typical a typical week. Just running through this stuff. Uh, I played some mean mini golf. Ooh. Against Todd. Ooh. It's been our uh, our what else do we want to play right now? Screw it. Let's play some mini golf. So we play some mini golf. That's fair. Um. And then uh, I, I've, you know, football manager, man. Still going. It's got Hooks the claws in, in now. Yeah. Hooks are in. Uh, I think Kenny and I are in the top three in the league right now. Ooh, okay. So, and we're right. We're battling. Battling right to the end. We get, we just got to January the other Good day. Good season there. Yeah, so far. We just got to January the other day. So we're uh, a little over. Uh, we're about halfway. Maybe a little over halfway through our season. So we'll see how that how that flushes out towards the end, but it it is a uh, it is a whole thing, as you know, football manager man. Yeah, it's a it is a deep deep game. It's deep, doesn't go away either. It's like a drug addiction, really. Oh yeah, I mean, because when the new one comes out, it'll be the same thing. I'll just be like, oh yeah, give me more football. You might you might you might be able to you might be able to escape for like a month, two months, maybe three. I, really, the only way I can escape is when real world things happen. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, all of a sudden he's moves to the West coast or mm-hmm. all the other things, just minor finish. setbacks in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Cause we really, we all know the goal is to get back to playing football manager. <laughs> First thing you do, you build rebuild the PC, install steam football manager, move on. There it is. Then that's literally what he did actually last week. I think nice. Put a new hard drive in. So he rebuilt. And he's like, all right, I'm reinstalling windows. First thing's on football manager. And then when that's done, I'm in, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we did. So yeah, fun nice. times. Let's uh let's go grab some food and then have a entire episode dedicated to a shit ton more game news. More games. A lot more. It's kind of ridiculous. If you thought this episode was large, oh boy, it's getting bigger. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>